So congrats. We are YouTube partners. You too. You too. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. And thank all of you for tuning in all this time for over the past year. We could not have done it without you. We are psyched to be entering a new phase in the Skip Town All-Stars podcast. Yeah, we are now monetizing. So spend that uh, spend that big money. Wow. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I hope we get enough for lunch in our first paycheck. <laughs> this is exciting. It could not have happened at a better time because we have just hit our one year anniversary. Get ready for some solid recaps and some new info. Here we go. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Hey, listeners. Ever wonder what it would be like to blow up your comfort zone at the tender age of 50? Well, we did just that. When our last kid went off to college, we hit the road in search of a new hometown. Now we bounce from city to city and bring you along for the ride. This is the Skip Town All-Stars podcast. Welcome back, All-Stars, to the best damn podcast episode you have ever listened to. That's right. Today is a really good one. We are one year in, and this is going to be a summary of all things liked, disliked, learned about like it's going to be a what was the road like for you this past year yeah for sure and we are definitely going to give you a synopsis of sort of where we are in our journey so far in finding a new hometown pretty psyched about that i have not seen your list you have not seen my top five no we actually do have a list and we have questions for each other because we both had different experiences on the road so we thought would be very apropos to uh, ask each other what a whole year on the road has been like. And listeners have asked us many times, do you have a top five? Are you going to be settling down soon? So we're going to answer that question as well. All right. So here we go. I have a question and I'm just going to kick it off. What was your first thought when we left, when we packed up the car, what was your thought as we drove away from the house for the last time? Uh, Actually, it's something I shared on Leanne's podcast, which was I was really concerned about being lonely in the car. <laughs> and I know you laugh, but I don't know why, because it's a valid it's a valid concern when you're traveling with somebody who doesn't talk while you're traveling. And um, we didn't do road trips often because of that. The very first road trip I ever did with James, we were dating. I think we were just like six months in. And we took a trip to Las Vegas. And from California, that's four and a half hours. And the entire four and a half hours, he said maybe 10 words. And so I remember getting out of the car with him. I think that's an exaggeration. No, not at all. And I got out of the car with you. And I don't know if you remember, but I said, I'm never taking a road trip with you again. I do remember that. Yeah. And so I had to get in the car again with him on the way back. And he again, maybe said 10 words. So subsequently, we never took road trips because he just doesn't talk on the car. He doesn't talk really much. Well, you're more talkative now than you have been in many years. Um, <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. Either. I, th- I think you're just noticing it more because you're spending more time with me. I actually do talk and probably a the lot. Funny- I think my coworkers would say I probably talk too much. The fact that you were open to doing a podcast made me really question who you were and who I was married to Uh, because a podcast requires talking. So all that to say, um, I was really worried about going on a road trip with somebody who we generally don't talk in the car. So that was my biggest fear. Okay. And how'd that work out for you? That worked out. It really was alleviated in so many ways because you chatted. Because I won't shut up. You chatted (laughs) and um, none of it felt like whether you're forcing it or not, it doesn't ever feel forced. And so, um, yeah, it was crazy. It was, I don't know how it happened that like we got in the car and that fear went away. I like, did you, did you make yourself like, cause I had voiced that concern, you know, with you on Leanne's show. I mean, you knew I was worried about that. Like a lot of silence, yeah. many miles. So do you just like think of stuff to say now? Like, what do you do? Um, no, I mean, I guess I just say it as I think about it. Um, I'm not sure. I, I don't have the same amount of stress in my life that I had before. So that certainly helps. I'm not as in my head. I get very in my head, as you know, uh, when times are tough or things are sort of percolating in my mind. Like I tend to not be in the present a lot. I tend to be in the future a lot. Mm -hmm. And we'll get into my answer to this question in a second, but uh, I really did try to focus more on being present. You know, it worked. Okay. Good job. 
Hey, thanks. I'll tell my therapist you said so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so what was your first thought when we left Los Angeles in a rented minivan with nothing but your clothes and really just a very loose roadmap? I would say that my pervading thoughts were that I had never spent that much time away from work ever. And we were starting what we knew was going to be at least a three month, probably a four or five month trip. And I I have a lot of coworkers, especially single ones, that, you know, since we're all working in a freelance world, they enable themselves to sort of sock money away for the times when they're not working. And they weren't like me. They didn't have kids. So they weren't always hustling for that next gig. They would actively take time off, you know, two or three months at a time and go travel to Thailand or wherever. And I had never done that. I had always envisioned being able to do that, but standing at the edge of starting that was, it was, it felt odd. I won't say that it was unnerving or, you know, frightening or anything like that. I was very, it was exhilarating, but at the same time, it felt very foreign to me. So, and I would also say that since you and I often worked on opposite ends of Los Angeles, we had never spent that quantity of time together. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was also a thing that, you know, I was thinking about. It was like, oh my gosh, is she going to kill me? Am I going to kill her? You know, like, what is this? What What are the next three or four months going to look like? And I know when we are working a ton, in, it, you know, sort of raising children and, and doing our weekly thing, um, we lost a lot of time together. And mm -hmm. you, I, I wasn't anticipating, like, I wasn't feeling like, you can get that back. I know you can't, but at the same time, it did feel like a bit of a new start. And for, and that was super exciting because for me, it was like a second chance to not be gone all the time, you know? Okay. So anyway, how'd I do there? You did great. You're stuck with me. <laughs> <I'll let> <laughs> <laughs> You're taking a girl's trip to get away from me. You've had so much of me. <laughs> well, um, I would say that it ended up working out for you, didn't it? <laughs> it really like, did. I yeah. mean, you didn't. We didn't really get sick of each other, and we still haven't. I mean, there are moments, but that fear of would I get sick of her? Would she get sick of me? I mean, we have those moments, of course, because yeah, we're human. Definitely. But um, it hasn't been a situation where, other than Mexico City, <laughs> where we're like, <laughs> where I'm out of me? here. Yeah. Where we're like, I'm out of here. That's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> When you told me you were done. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm um, done with this. I'm done with the podcast. I'm done with you. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that wasn't even a road trip. <laughs> uh, no. That was actually vacation. Uh-huh. That was a vacation. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I mean, for the amount of time we spend together, I think we do pretty good. We do, for sure. Uh, I will say it's been kind of weird and great at the same time that we are working on the same enterprise together, trying to get this podcast off the ground. I think it's great that you have your department. I have mine. So there is a separation mm -hmm. and there's not a ton of overlap. Yeah. Uh, except when we're actually like putting the, sh like about to spit out every episode we get together. And that's always fun. It is strange because not only do we travel together and live together, but we're starting a business together because this is really a business. So we have different departments and we are literally the head of each of those departments. And he has his own departments that he is the head of and I have my own department. Once in a while, I get sexually harassed by his department. <laughs> well, who, who do I file a lawsuit with? <laughs> but uh, it I'm not going to comment because anything I say is going to be used against me in the future. So, <laughs> but it is interesting that we do all of that together, and we still do enjoy the time we spend on the road. And I, if I had to guess why. I would say because we each, my, I'm just going to speak for myself. I do respect your time alone when you need it. I never used to. Okay. Maybe I don't respect it as often as you I, want me to. I, I picked up my guitar to tune it yesterday. <laughs> I got one note. Okay. I had a problem. And then you with came my, in. I had a problem with my phone. Yeah. And we all know when you're the tech guy, you are IT. Your phone is constantly glitchy. Your IT in the company. Constantly glitchy. Okay, IT cannot be sassy. <laughs> IT is always sassy. <laughs> IT is always a bunch of a-holes. So I know, but this IT person that I hired, I I we had to talk at, during the interview, you have to be nice. No. 
<laughs> we did not discuss that. Those terms were never, those terms not only were never discussed, they have never been met. So oh, they have never been met for sure. Cause <laughs> it always has attitude, but oh any gosh. case, um, I, all that aside, Is it your, you respect my time. Okay. I do respect your time. You just got done telling me yesterday when I, like I was walking past you happy and you were like, well, and what did you want to do? What did you want me to do? Something I needed. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. On your phone. Uh-huh. Always with the phone. Calendar problems. Pretty much. Yeah. Profile I do. picture problems. Oh, always. I always have phone problems, but whatever. Okay. I, re- I value your time when you're out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> you value my time when I escape. That's but when, no, seriously. When I, I think, when I go offline. I, I think we're both respectful of each other and the things that we want to do and the things we want to pursue, whether it's in this business or like extracurricular. Like, I don't know. We don't. We don't ever give really each other a hard time and we're very accommodating for each other. Like, you know, when your family comes to town or when my family comes to town or when your friends want to visit or when we're going to go visit a friend, we're both very accommodating. So I think that's really, really helpful in the relationship and in the business part of it. I will say that I actually expected to have a lot more sexy time than we get because of this podcast. I don't know. I just thought like we were 50 somethings and like we didn't have kids in the house anymore. Oh, yeah, I, no. I just thought it'd be a lot more like when we met in our 20s. Okay, you're crazy. I know. I don't know. Clearly. You, you were thinking of someone else. I was <laughs> I was super excited about that. But <laughs> you shouldn't have started a business with me. You know, when we talked about this in my introduction meeting, in my interview, <laughs> you said <laughs> there would be more sexy time. You said I would be allowed to sexually harass you a lot more. Oh, did I? Yeah. Okay. All right. If I, I don't recall right. that. I don't recall that. I'll have to speak with my lawyer about that. Maybe I just inferred that from our conversation uh, yeah, about the kids were leaving the house. Somewhere in that interview process you did. Yeah. Okay. So I have a question for you. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> when traveling, you experience a lot. I'm literally reading from what I wrote because this is a specific question. Okay. Uh, when traveling, you experience a lot, not just a location, mm-hmm. but people, local activities, food, lifestyle of that place, the politics of the um, area, and the list goes on. Um, But I want you to tell me two things you learned about yourself by being on the road for as long as you were. Okay. So the first thing is I honestly did not expect to get butterflies when we were either rolling up to a new town or about to meet new people, specifically for interviews and uh, you know, they ask a locals and all that. Like I do get a little, you know, it's funny. It's the same feeling that when I was a young lad uh, about to play a football game or something like that, it was just like, you just really want to do your best and put your best foot forward and, and be open-minded and check out the city really for, or town, for whatever it is for as much as you can soak in. And there's a little bit of pressure there, you know, in a way. And, and, and I think a lot of that pressure comes from the fact that for better or worse, we try and give an opinion and an analysis and all that stuff to people on the podcast, which is great. Uh, but I just, I never anticipated sort of walking into a new restaurant to interview somebody or meeting, you know, a local artist or something yeah. like that and having like, oh man, this camera better work or this better, you know, like none of this stuff, like all these things ticking in my head. And then the minute we see their faces like, hi, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. like, and, and it really is within the first two minutes, everything, because, you know, you're very social. I'm very social when I want to be And most of the people we encounter, they wouldn't be interviewing with us if they weren't social either. So it all, and just the amount of friends that we've made as as a result of that has been really a thrill. But I do get a little antsy. It is interesting because you're approaching the the situation as an Ask a Local, which is, you know, something that we put up on our YouTube where we interview locals now of places we are visiting. Yeah. And you approach it in a very like laid back, want to just get to know this person. And you're feeling that way walking into it. But (laughs) you also know you better make sure that camera does work. Is the lighting okay? Is the mic, can they, can, can anyone hear it? Because what's the point? This person has put time aside in their schedule to do this with us. We've put time aside in our schedule. And so as casual and as um, engaging and social as we are, it's still it's still a job in the sense that it better work because you just wasted somebody's time and it may have been a great lunch. None, nonetheless, it was yeah. a great lunch, but now you don't have the proper footage. So that, 
that is stressful for you. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I mean, there's a million the things that way. could go wrong. Yeah, I, I mean, anything can, you know, we've had a few interviews that we've done where we haven't played them because they just, not even for technical reasons, just for whatever reason, the chemistry wasn't, or doesn't seem to fit the piece or the city or whatever. We're like, eh, we're not going to run that one, you know? And um, it doesn't always work out. And that's just how it is. I mean, it would have been how it is if we weren't if we didn't have the cameras, if we weren't trying to podcast our travels and all that stuff, um, there are some people you meet where it's like, you just don't gel, you know, and that's fine. I just, I, I think, uh, for the most part, we've been tremendously lucky and I really yeah. do think that it's been really pleasant that people want to tell you about their, their hometown. It is. It's, it's, it's great. We did not realize how proud people were. I guess. Is that yeah. the, where they come from? I mean, everyone, look, most people like where they live, but yeah. then there are people who love where they live. And we've, we've met so many of those people. One that comes to mind is Angie in, <sighs> in yep. um, Laurel, Laurel, Mississippi, you yep. know, and just, she started crying like the pride that she had in her, in her town just rolled out of her eyes. And it was really, you know, it was touching. I was like, Ugh. <laughs> you know, I yeah. like, did a little chokey choke for a second there. And, and that was an ask a local that we didn't even anticipate happening. We walked into their store. We had a camera just because they're, they had been business, been in business for 30 years. And we thought, let's check out this store and, you know, downtown Laurel, Mississippi, the owners were there, yeah. the camera was rolling and, oh, we captured a moment. So uh, that's a great Ask a Local to uh, check out the Laurel, Mississippi with Rodney and Angie. Yeah, it is. And I would say the other thing that I've learned is just how claustrophobic I was in Los Angeles and uh, that sort of fight for mobility. I think it's one of the reasons like everybody knows we have, you know, obviously where we're recording right now, the Florida house and everything, but it's like, the, it's very bungalow style, like house upon house upon house. And I have realized that, uh, the, the, the towns where I've had the biggest thrill are generally speaking, the ones where you can get a plot of land. Like we just finished Bernie and I was like, Oh my gosh, five acres in Bernie would be Bernie, great. Texas. Or, yeah. Or different. I, I just, for me, it really is sort of become a sticking point. And I, I, I think the one thing that I've learned about myself is just through sort of other people that we've met where they have that kind of land. Uh, they've really inspired me. So it's interesting because you came from an area where you owned like a lot of property, your parents, right. And your aunt and uncle and people like in your life. People. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, not us specifically, okay. but there, there, I mean, there were, you, you, there were woods right down the street. Your parents, I think had like your mom, when I first met you, the oh, yeah. house she rented was on acreage. It's so, true. and and you are coming back full circle, it seems. I really am. I, I think in a lot of ways, uh, the the sort of country boy in me is finally, the prodigal is finally returning Okay. in a lot of ways. And so it, we just had the conversation yesterday or two days ago. Uh, I'm talking about going camping in North Carolina and you're like, you're not going camping by yourself. And I'm like, I like for me, it's, it sounds like a Mecca. And for you, you're like, no, it's dangerous. You're not doing that. It sounds creepy. Like a single guy camping, like every family is going to run for the hills with their kids when they see you rolling up by yourself. I don't think so. I think, I, it'll be I think all right. so. It'll just be a day or two. I'm not even going to tell you when I do it. I'm just going to pack the tent I do think it's dangerous to do it by yourself. You could get hurt and fall and nobody's there to find you. But I also think there are going to be people who think you're creepy. (laughs) Okay, fair enough. (laughs) Okay, so- They're going to have to get over it. So uh, let me ask you the same question. What have you learned about yourself? Two things you've learned about yourself while traveling to all these towns. I lived in a constant state of fear the last four years of being in L.A., Wow. Yeah. Uh, I did not realize that until we hit the road. So, um, you know, we joke a lot about there's a family joke that uh, when I would go to the bank in L.A., I was always in a rush because I had to pick the kids up. I was leaving work, you know, had to get them to soccer or whatever the case may be. So like anyone who has kids and you live in a city and everything is fast paced, your life is fast paced. So doing bank runs, it had to be in and out, in and out. And it was never like the long line at the teller that I was ever worried about. It was always when I pulled into the parking lot of Chase, I always said to myself, it didn't matter what Chase I was in LA, please don't get robbed because I only had a few minutes to pick up my kids from school. So it wasn't even she about- She didn't have time to get robbed. No, I did not have time to get robbed. I it wasn't time for this. Wasn't the fear of getting robbed. It wasn't the fear of them taking my purse, my money, none of that. It was like, don't delay. Like my kids are gonna be waiting for me. So 
it's a joke. We talk about it. But truthfully, that's how I felt every single time I went to the bank in LA. Please don't get robbed. I think most robbers would agree with you. They want a fast transaction. (laughs) I know, but it's they don't want to hang out and chit chat. It's not going to be fast enough. Those kids are going to be sitting outside the school crying because I am not there. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so that is a joke. But truthfully, I always felt that way. Like, but I always felt that way. Um, not just about getting robbed at a bank. I felt that way about everything. Like, I felt that way about walking into Trader Joe's. I would think to myself, I hope no one shoots the the store up. Um, I would think like, I hope I don't get carjacked. I hope the bullet, the stray bullet doesn't come through my windshield. Uh, But I did not start feeling that way until the last four years of living there. I would say it started right before the pandemic. And then obviously the pandemic just exacerbated so many problems in our city and created problems we didn't have. And so the last, yeah. So I did not realize that. But then, then the next thing that I learned about myself while being on the road is. Well, can I just jump in real quick? I was going to say in 2020, things were really quiet in LA, but I would agree with you that around 2021, especially going into the holiday season, there was like a local mall near us Mm -hmm. where, you know, I don't forget the name of the store, whatever the store was, Macy's Bloomingdale's, whatever the hell it was, where it was, you know, they busted the case and it was they Nordstrom. ran through and yeah. It was every so, single, they were doing it. It was like every other day. Yeah. And it was just in a section of town where it was pretty surprising. Like you didn't mm-hmm. see that kind of thing going on. They would do smash and grabs, but yeah. it was like almost like weekly. Like they were like open up the door for them now because they don't want them to keep smashing the door. It's like, okay, just take our shit. Yeah. And I remember uh, somewhere around that time I had like surgery or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, I asked you. And you said, can you go to the mall and pick up this? And I'm saying, I'm not going to the mall with like my shoulder in repair. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get killed in a smashing grab. I'm not even going to be able to fight back. You yeah. know? And you were serious and he didn't go. And I didn't even question it. Like when he said, I'm not going to go because there's too many smashing grabs there. Uh. I was like, yeah, okay. I was like, all right, fine. I just need to be at full health, you know? Yeah. So living in a city where you can't do things like go to your local mall because you are afraid of a smash and grab or getting pistol whipped, it's, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You know, so so that is something I learned about myself on the road. That has been, I haven't thought those thoughts in the past, I don't know, 11 months. Took me like a month to like feel safe. And like, you know, it's been 11 months now where I have not, once thought of like rolling up to a bank and it's going to get robbed. I have not had that single thought uh, or walking into a place and. Yeah, but there have been a couple backwaters where we've been where it's like, ooh, those people are looking at us sort of side eyed, you know. That has been uncomfortable, but there's never been a huge fear. Okay. So that I haven't had that. Uh, but then on the flip side, the one thing I have learned about myself uh, being on the road is that. There's nothing that compares to living in a big city. And Mm. I would suggest that for any young person, do it even if it's for a year. Because going to these small towns, you realize how much of a bubble a lot of these people have lived their entire lives. And there is nothing wrong with it, but there is something eye-opening about living in a big city, just like there's something eye-opening about traveling. You learn so much about yourself and you learn so much about other people when you travel, whether it be locally or internationally. Um, If you've ever met somebody who has traveled or who has lived in a big city, their experiences are really vast. True. Even if you only do it for a year, you're going to meet people who speak different languages in a city. You're going to meet people who have a um, different set of traditions for the holidays, things like that, that you are not going to experience living in your small town. So um, you can't do it when you're set in your ways. Forget it. No one over the age of 35 is going to move to a big city and be like, oh, it's so eye-opening. They're just going to want to go home. But if you're in your 20s, I say 100% do it. Um, there's nothing that that compares to it. And that is something I learned by traveling and going to these small towns. I do think there's more of a youth advantage too. Like staying young, believe it or not, I think is more likely if you're living in a city because you're just surrounded by so many different people in different sort of walks of life or places in their lives. I I just think that there's sort of a hustle and bustle that keeps you active in a city. Whereas, you know, we've encountered people younger than us 
that you can see the wear on their face from doing the same thing over and over for 20 years straight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's true. There's some there. I think there's some truth to that. There's it keeps you young, the um, energy and the activity available to you yeah. um, all over. Generally speaking, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I guess every individual is different, but uh, okay. So moving on, I want to know what, so we traveled all over the place. Uh, I think we're near, I'm not counting my trip to the Middle East, but I think we're about 26,000 miles in, uh-huh. four countries, 20, 21 states, something like that. It feels like it. A <laughs> uh, hundred towns at this point. Yeah, a hundred towns. Like, uh, there's probably a hundred towns. Yeah, that we've either stopped in. Texas or, or, is 50. <laughs> yeah, Texas does have 50 okay. towns by itself. Um, so what was your favorite road activity the whole time we were out? I actually have two because I just couldn't keep it to one. So the first one would be the Renaissance Fair in Larkspur, Colorado. Oh, nice. That's a recent one. Yeah. Only because I thought the Renaissance Fair was basically going to be a farmer's market style where there's tents set up everywhere. And one guy dressed as a pirate. Completely. (laughs) So I did not know that in Larkspur, they actually built a town that's there throughout the year. It's a town. People live there that work there. And this fair is just in the summer. I believe it's May to August. And not just that it's stationary and a real town built to look like the Renaissance era. People get dressed up to go. Like That to me is insane. I had no idea. I was, I like walked back in time. People had the ears on, like the elf ears. It got me. It just totally got me. I, I want to dress up (laughs) next time I go. I want to dress up. Everyone talked in a certain dialect too. It was so funny. Yeah. The old English. And they had the beer steins. It was amazing. Okay. So I loved the Renaissance Fair in Larkspur, Colorado. And that was just completely spur of the moment, not even planned. And then The second thing that I loved experiencing while we were traveling, another thing that was just spur of the moment, not even planned, was the was the amateur wrestling match. Oh, I went to in Corpus Christi, Texas. Nice. That was incredible. I first of all never been to like a WWE wrestling match. I've seen them on TV. But uh, Parker's friend, Fernando, who works at her station, Chris Six News, um, is an amateur wrestler. And he um, had a match that night, but it was a full night of wrestling, like for hours. And it was was awesome. It was in a hall that's probably normally used for quinceanera. So you walk in and it was these beautiful draped like fabric with a chandelier. And then in the middle is a, is a wrestling ring. It was hysterical. Yeah. The audience went crazy. Little kids were like giving the middle finger to the wrestlers. It was like insane. It was <laughs> insane. <laughs> and, um, raise them right. And then, uh, I don't know. It was just, it was fun. So that, that was so great. I, those were, those were my two, like I never would have experienced either one of those, uh, not traveling. I mean, I just, I mean, I guess if I could have sought it out in LA, but this was something we just stumbled upon and was very cool and just of the moment and of the town, like Larkspur and then Corpus Christi. They're really into this and that, you know, the people that went there, I loved it. That's awesome. Uh, I would say mine are just, you know, I I made a couple of buddies along the way. You did. The ones that like really stand out to me. Like people that I would never have met probably, right? Uh, The first one is Chris in Santa Fe, the Navajo jewelry maker. Yeah. And just following him since we've met and, you know, just seeing the artwork that he produces and just sort of knowing a little more of the culture. Like he's a friend I would not have made had we not traveled. And so uh, just, you know, watching his enterprise and the beautiful, gorgeous jewelry he makes, uh, that that is something that I would have never experienced. Um, meeting Bert and Jenna in Covington, Kentucky, I would have never, ever thought of Covington. I, I, I don't even, I didn't, I had, had never even heard about it yeah. before we, and I'm from Ohio. It's literally across the border from Cincinnati. And so, uh, just meeting people like that and chip in Savannah and, and count, I could go on and on. Uh, so if I didn't mention you, don't worry about it. 
we'll get to that. Uh, but <laughs> you're on, you're on, you're, he's still thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, I am. Everybody's still in, like right there in my head. And, and so, uh, like making some guy, like Chip and I went to a minor league hockey game. Like I know, he invited we, me. Like I spent, we met, the, at a, we, we met him at a bar. Yeah. We met him at a bar and you actually went to Corpus Christi to visit Parker. And I didn't, I didn't want for anything to do that weekend. Like there were plenty of things to do. Chip took me all over the place. It was great. So yeah. we were fast friends and we are still talking to this day. Um, we were actually talking about maybe putting a future project together or something like that. So, um, but uh, that, and then I would say, but my, my favorite actual activity was just being able to do the hikes that we always oh. wanted to do. Wow. We yeah. saw Sedona gorgeous, like, like, God made it himself, right? And uh, we hiked in New Mexico. I've hiked in Salt Lake City with Mia. Uh, we hiked Vancouver. in the, we hiked in Vancouver. We hiked in Seattle outside of Seattle near the hotel Zion, St. Edwards, Zion. You name it. So all those places. Uh, we've gotten away from that a little bit, I guess, because there are no mountains around here. We tend to be mountain <sighs> hikers. Yeah, like, not, Texas is a little flat. Texas is a little flat because we spent a lot of time and there. way hot. I yeah. think it's probably because the summer has been 120 degrees well, everywhere also, we've gone. Mississippi and Louisiana, we spent time there. There's like no hills there. There where, are no wh hills there. Where we were, where we were. No, there. we yeah. did that rickety ass bike ride in Alabama and that was terrible. <laughs> so that does not count. I like um, that. The, and then I know I'm adding like what you, I, I, my question was what one thing did uh -huh. you like? Yeah, you're going off the rails now. I know, but here's my last thing. I love Zillow rerouting. And that is just when we're traveling along and I'm pulling up Zillow because I see something where I say, oh, that might be something that I would like in my new hometown. And then all of a sudden I'm doing a Zillow deep dive and I'm having you pull off the freeway and we're like yeah. driving through some community or something. That's fun. That's one of my favorite activities. That's yeah, a good one. I, I dig that. I enjoyed that with you as well. Okay, good. Good, good. <laughs> all right. What was your least favorite city that we have visited in the past year and why? I think it's no secret. I think Louisville is definitely my least favorite city. Um, so for anyone who hasn't heard that episode of our Louisville, Kentucky visit, explain to our new listeners why you did not have a favorable time in Louisville. Uh, it started with our daughter's volleyball tournament and how the fans from the local colleges there were not very welcoming to the team, for starters. It could be that it's because our team won that tournament, but, uh, Ellie, I remember our daughter had uh, a comment from a grandma saying, don't come back. You know, oh, remember wow, that? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of kicked off the weekend there. And then I had several sort of morning coffee walks where people would actively be sitting on their, <laughs> actively sitting on their porch. They would be sitting on their porch and actively looking at me and when I said hello or good morning, they would actively not return a hello or any sort of response. So I was like, okay, I get it. It's, you know, and it wasn't a bad neighborhood. We stayed in an okay neighborhood off campus, off mm -hmm. the University of Louisville. I just overall, the vibe there for me was a little odd. The neighborhoods were odd. They were set off. I, I know there are good neighborhoods there. I know there are great neighborhoods there. We drove through several of them. Uh, I also know there are a couple really great development like subdivisions or whatever outside of like a whole strip of you know liquor stores and strip clubs so um you know i'm sure if I, if we live there for any length of time we've actually had a couple people come back at us and say you're wrong about louisville you just went to the wrong th you just had a bad week or you had a bad weekend or whatever and that could be true yeah and and i've also had people say yeah you know what you're you're being a little tough on louisville um or you know maybe try lexington instead okay but uh, it's funny because after we left Louisville, you know, I, I had to like dig in and I looked on Reddit and mm -hmm. a lot of people were like, yeah, it's just very clickish there. So okay. I think it would take us a minute to find our people there. You so and you I weren't are, totally off. I, I wasn't totally off. Okay. I, I do think it would take us time to find our people there. You and I don't have that kind of time and yeah. we're not those kind of people where like, we're just, we try to be instantly welcoming and warm to everybody. We need a city that matches our energy. Yeah. Louisville didn't seem to be it for us. Okay. Uh, what about you? So for me, it was Little Rock, Arkansas. Ooh, yeah, yeah. okay. Um, it was my least favorite city because it was boring. Mm. Uh, there wasn't a lot to do. We really tried so hard to find like cute areas 
to no avail. I remember one day we drove for like what seemed to be an hour trying to find this one town that I read about on a blog that was like adorable. We couldn't find it. Um, we did find this other town that also came up as like, oh, one to visit outside of, um, you know, downtown Little Rock. Everything had closed. Um, downtown Little Rock was just a couple of blocks. Um, they had like outdoor entertainment, but there was just like not a whole lot for us to do. Um, I even reached out to somebody who I'm friends with on Facebook, an acquaintance. She lives in Little Rock. So I thought, oh, she's going to tell me she had nothing to offer. She was like, yeah, have you tried here? And we had art. It was, you know, the, the area yeah. where they have the live music. Like, yeah, we're here now. She's like, yeah, there's not a whole lot to do here. So, um, for me, I don't know. We were there for a good five or six days and yeah. I dig deep, you know, I'll read blogs. I'll look at articles that, you know, was written on a local paper to find things to do. I couldn't. So for me, I would, unless somebody lives in little rock that's listening and you have a slew of things, I'm willing to try it again. But, uh, you know, if not, if there's no one out there that's telling me I'm wrong, yeah, little rock, I'm not going back. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I do remember there was that one little section of town where we went to the restaurants and all that. It has that to be was more than two blocks from me. Yeah. Here. It was pretty, it was pretty, uh, limited, yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know. I suspect that a lot of people who live in Arkansas live in more of a rural area. There are a ton of outdoorsmen who yeah. live in, in Arkansas, like hunters and, yeah. all that, and fishermen and all that. So, um, yeah, but I get it. You're right. It was a quick visit for us and we left and we didn't feel like we missed anything. No, Yeah. No, not at all. Okay. So then uh, let's talk about what place did you think had the nicest people? Auburn, Alabama. Mm. I mean, it was a tough answer. You know, I knew this question was coming. Yeah. Uh, I had to really think about it because it, it changed throughout our travels. Yeah. I would say initially it was Texas mm -hmm. and then it went to, um, I don't know, everyone in Oklahoma was really nice, but forget it. Auburn took the cake. I mean, Everyone in Mississippi that we came in contact with was friendly, but the people of Auburn, it was just above and beyond. So I felt Auburn, Alabama. Hmm. I agree. Uh, uh, that was your answer? Auburn, Alabama is my answer. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, between Todd, uh, Ernie, yes. who we met in Opelika, wh yes. which is, I know that's like, I, when we get to the top five, I know that's going to be in your top two. Yeah. Um, but uh, Ernie has actually sent us houses to look at in the yeah. neighborhood. Like nobody in any other area has done that except for Bert in Covington, Kentucky, Bert and Jenna in Covington, yeah. Kentucky. Ernie so, owns a business called, what's it called? You know, the Rock and Roll Pinball. Yep. In Opelika, Alabama. And yep. we met him one day by just frequenting his business. We love to go into businesses when we're visiting yeah. and just talk to people. We, we've mentioned this several times. I'll do little cute boutiques. He'll find coffee shops or whatnot. And yeah. we both stumbled upon this pinball place yeah. and thought, let's just go in and have fun and play pinball. And the owner immediately went out of his way to be accommodating. Yeah. It, he was great. And now we're all Facebook friends. Totally. And he sends us uh, Zillow links and houses that he thinks we might like. There was he one actually, house he sent. There was one house he sent that I didn't think you would be into at all. And I was like, oh, thanks, Ernie, you know, and I really appreciate it. Maybe this, maybe that. And then I saw you responded to him and you were like, oh my gosh, it's perfect, you know? And he went in. He went into the house and yeah. took some video for us, which was incredible. So yeah. I think we both have a new BFF. We do. And he should probably get a real estate license because if, probably we, should. if we buy property, he has to get the percentage. Yeah. But you just think of all the kids we met at the hotel, college students, like, so many places we've been where young people just look at us like we're olds. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, it's true. oh God, here come some olds. What do I gotta see? You know, everybody at the hotel was a comedy. Todd rolled out the red carpet for us yeah. at the Laurel Hotel. Yeah. All the girls at the Silver Lining Stable, uh, the ranch where yeah. you took your horse riding lesson. They were all fabulous. I, they mean, were. The restaurants we went to, it was just Amy yeah. Cotney let us into yeah. her house. We, it was an interview. Yeah. Amy Cotney's a realtor. We did an interview with her. She lives in Auburn. Uh, has She's got a, like a trillion subscribers and she made time for us. Yeah, it, yeah. Before her son's wedding, which was crazy. It was for sure. So I just, I, I mean, shop owners, restaurant owners, you name it, the waitress at the one place we went. Yes. Everybody there pound for pound was was so nice. It's funny that Auburn made both of our lists. It is. I mean, we talk about the nice people and I, you know, honestly, it was kind of a surprise. I wasn't expecting that in Alabama. Uh, no, no, I wasn't either. Not like that. Like, yeah. yeah, not at all. Truthfully, I was just like, oh, we're going to a, you know, we're going to another city. That's yeah. all I had anticipated. For sure. What city surprised you? And why? 
it could be good or bad. The reason it surprised you. Uh, I would say Auburn definitely surprised me for obvious reasons that we just mentioned. Covington surprised me. Okay. Because there is so much to do there within a five mile radius. I was not expecting that. You can go to an NFL game. You can go to an MLB game. You can baseball. see several different. Yeah. You get oh, did major you? league baseball oh, and okay. yes, MLB. Okay. We're good. <laughs> you go to concert, you go to major concerts, you can see your favorite band who may not be an A-lister. Uh, plenty of venues there, music venues, plenty of festivals. They do some dark beer festival. They do October all kinds Fest of- Oktoberfest is huge. Oktoberfest, they do everything and anything there. Um, and not to mention the biking paths. Like every yeah. time I see Burt Stewart's post, he's on a biking path that goes for miles and it's beautiful. I mean, yeah. just- it's we amazing. said he was going to take his bike to the pink concert or something know, like that. Yes. Like he got tickets to the, he scored yeah. tickets to the pink concert. He was like, okay, I guess I'll go. Yeah. And he was, he said, well, I don't want to fight traffic. So I guess I'll just ride my bike. Like, where can you do that? Yeah. Like so, so rare. It is so rare. Um, yeah. So that place uh, really surprised me. And then also I'm, I have to mention Laurel, Mississippi, because those are two places I left where the wheels have been spinning Ever and since. I'm still like think like they still come up in my weekly thoughts. So, wow. Yeah. Okay. That's, and you know what? We spent an afternoon in Covington. So yeah. you and I both have agreed that we're going to go back before it snows yeah. because we want to see what the city is like, um, you know, when it's not three deep, three feet deep in snow. Yeah. But just uh, think of all the advantage it has for us specifically. I know it does. My family is, you right know, there. Uh, you know, a few hours away in Ohio. Uh, your family is a quick flight in Chicago to yeah. Chicago, your extended family. Uh, regionally, we have Kentucky, we have Tennessee, we have North Carolina, all within a day's drive. It's true. And, um, it's, the town is super cute. Uh, just my, con you know, you know, my concern is the winter. So I don't want to be there during the winter cause I don't want to be in the snow. So, uh, so we would have to, you know, figure that situation out. Okay. <laughs> but it's, it's, we're going back for a visit. So that's how much it resonated with you in the short afternoon we were there. Yeah, for yeah. sure. What about you? Oh, the city that surprised me the most was Oklahoma City. Yeah. And their weed problem. Oh. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this. I'm, I know if you you've are. listened to our Oklahoma episode where we visited OKC, mm -hmm. uh, we realized that Oklahoma has a very large black market weed issue. And so uh, we learned that when I tried to ship some things at UPS and was continually getting interrogated about what was in the box and then found out, well, it's because. You know, people ship weed in boxes at UPS. So uh, that was very surprising. And I would never have learned that had I not traveled through Oklahoma City. For someone who doesn't do weed, you think about weed a lot. We did and nothing got solved about weed because you were thinking about weed. I know. It's fascinating to me how the once taboo drug, you know, people were like, oh, he's a stoner. You know, don't go to Johnny's house. He's a stoner. <laughs> now everyone's like, let's go to Johnny's house. Go he's, to Johnny's house. He's got gummies. You You're can sleep well fun. tonight. Yeah. You're going to have fun. It's always fun at Johnny's house. Bam, so bam. yeah, I am I am uh, mildly fascinated with how it has taken a turn mm. and is now part of pop culture and mainstream. And we're going to be seeing CBD gummies at CVS soon. Okay. Um, I'm, I know that bothers you. A little bit. Yeah, mm. Check out our Nothing Got Solved with the uh, weed episode. I think if you're doing weed every day, you're a drug addict. He tends to differ. I don't. Yeah. Neither one of us do it, but you know our thoughts on it are different. Totally. Okay. So in our travels, what city have you determined hates us as Californians the most? Oh, that's tough. We get tons of hate traveling mm -hmm. and that, uh, so this is, I had to really think about this, but coming in first place, Boise, Idaho. Ooh, yeah. That's always a good one. Yeah. Uh -huh. That is the only state where somebody actually yelled at us while we were in our car, go back home. Yeah. Uh, haven't had that yet. Um, have had side eye, have had people saying stuff like, don't California, my Texas. And the most funny thing I find is it's usually people who've never been there. Oh, absolutely. I they love just those. hear it on the news. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I'm like, oh, have you been? No, but da, da, da. And it's, yeah. you know, always some white- I would white, never go there. Yeah. It's always some white guy too. <laughs> of course. Uh -huh. Some old white guy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. My answer? Yes. Let's hear it. Central Florida. 
Central Florida Ooh. hates California. Our neighbors like us because your brother lives next door. That is true. Yeah. yeah. And so they like us because they like them. Uh-huh. And when I'm out and about in the community at a store, a, a store clerk, a store this or a store that, before we had our driver's license changed and all that other stuff, yeah. always a comment. People who have come to our house to do work, contractors, oh. always had something to say about California. We actually stopped telling people we're from California. Like yeah. it became a thing. It, anybody doing work in the house, we just, what were you saying for a while? Where, where did, one time I swear, did you say you were from Ohio? Like did you tell yeah. somebody we lived in Ohio? Yeah, I just started telling people I'm from Ohio. Ultimately, I would say Floridians, in my, in my own experience, Floridians tend to hate Californians more oh. than anybody else I've encountered. That's a good one. So here's a flip side. In our travels, what city have you visited mm -hmm. could care less well, about where end, you're from? The other end of the spectrum. Yep. Uh, I would I would say, I, I thought about this, and I would say, without a doubt, Laurel, Mississippi. That was my answer. Laurel, Mississippi has, as told to us, the one woman we met in the general store was from Canada. She said she and her husband had moved there, I don't know, for some time. They had been living there for some time. And the community of expats, basically, she called them from other places, uh, was so vibrant. And it seemed as if they integrated within the community, like the community just folded them in. And I would say, uh, not just specifically from California, but I, I just say it's a community that it's definitely a town that welcomes people from other places. If you're going to come in and you're going to help make something out of the town, they're all for you joining them. Yeah, that was my answer too. I cannot believe we agreed on that. Wow, because yeah. we've visited hundreds of cities and we both agree that that place is the most welcoming. No yeah. side eye. The minute I said I was from LA, they the, they didn't they just there wasn't even like a question. They would just be like, "Oh, okay, great." Blah blah blah. Like they're so wanting their town to grow and be prosperous. Yeah. That they don't care where you're from. If you are interested in making their town better, they want you. Like they yeah. literally don't care. That that was the feeling I got as well. Yeah, that that's that town is amazing. It really is. And the only other one I would mention, honestly, is Salt Lake City. They just it, it uh, Laurel is welcoming, mm -hmm. and they're like, yeah, come on in, like you know, get ready to yeah. you know pitch in and do some work. Uh, where Salt Lake City literally is indifferent to where you're from. Oh yeah, they don't. Care. You know, they they don't care if you're from California. They don't care. You know, like do you have a credit card? That's all they care about. Pretty are you much. Pay, are you paying for this um, right now and leaving a tip? They do not yeah, care. Or is your student going here? Great. You know, I yeah. mean, the campus has exploded. There are so many kids there from other places. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are from California. So uh, I'm sure there are people that aren't happy with the growth of the city over the past 10 or 15, 20 years. Or we whatever. haven't heard that. No, I mean. Not like in Boise where they yeah. tell you wherever you go, yeah. you're at the taco shop and they, you know, they're like, yeah, yeah everyone from California is ruining our town. Oh, I, uh, I definitely think half of Orange County has moved to Boise. So, I, you know, in some in some respects, I think but a lot of I people, think their complaints are realized. But a lot of people have moved to Salt Lake, but we didn't get that whole side no. eye, like, oh, you're ruining our, our city. No. I think they're smart enough to realize that if people from California are moving, they have money and your town's going to grow. Well, some people want to take your money, yeah. but they want you to go away. It doesn't happen. You can't take the money and then want the person to go away. Plus, I think in Salt Lake City, you have Mormon or not. Are you Mormon or are you not? And if you're not, well, whatever. You yeah, know, <laughs> I know. See ya. I'm going to go yeah. like, hang out with my Mormon friend. If yeah. you're Mormon, then you got to come to Tabernacle. If you're not, is it Tabernacle or Temple? I want to say it correct. I don't know. Oh. I'm not Mormon. The Church of Latter-day Saints. If you, you go to the Church of Latter-day Saints, if you don't, if you're not, then you don't. And they don't even see you. Yeah. You know, I'd so. rather be unseen. Oh, me too. I think it's great. I think for all the people there from somewhere else, they enjoy being unseen or just seen amongst each other anyway. Yeah, but we so, went off. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, okay. okay. So next one is we are uh, we are not food experts, but everybody says we talk so much about food. We do. And we do. Uh, what place, in your opinion, had the best food? Ooh, this was a tough one. Uh, so I had to pick two. I could not just oh, settle on goodness. one. I'm sorry. Okay. Dallas, Texas. Oh. Dallas, because it had the best barbecue of any barbecue. Terry Black's. 
Yeah. Not just that one, but there was a couple that we went to like, okay. and then that one night in the hotel, we ordered Mediterranean just because we couldn't do barbecue anymore. And that mm-hmm. place was incredible. Okay. Every place we went to in Dallas for food was so good. Remember when we picked up Aspen and we went to that, that bar oh, yeah. restaurant, um, yeah, that, that mainstay off of campus there yeah, for yeah. SMU. Yeah. Uh huh. And, uh, that was good. The ice cream down the street, the gelato place was good. Just so Dallas. Yeah. Then this is not in particular order. Like Dallas isn't number one. It's just my favorites. Second one, Savannah, Georgia. Ah, yeah. me too. Yeah. Savannah just killed it every time, every place we went. Uh, too much fried chicken. Uh, I, my stomach hurt when I left yeah. Savannah and I gained 10 pounds easily. Oh, Savannah yeah. was amazing. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner score every single time. Crystal Beer Parlor was the pinnacle <laughs> of my, and that's where I met yes. uh, Chip and Ray. Yep. And uh, I had the fried haddock. That was the pinnacle of my beer and fried fish tear oh, that I had been on. You had started. Yeah. And I ended up in the hospital like three days later with COVID. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I don't think there was a fried food that gave you COVID. It wasn't, but let's face it. I wasn't at my healthiest self no, when, uh, when I contracted COVID. I had fried pound cake that day. You did. You had I fried. I remember that. So, yeah. but, he, but here's a quick list. Uh, oh, you have uh, a list. It was I do. Just, I, I thought list. it was. Like, no, no, no. I'm just saying of the places we went in okay. Savannah, here's why. Oh, oh. Here's why. Trailer Park. T R E Y L O R Park has three different restaurants. They have double wide diner. They have Trailer Park, I think it's just called, and then they have Trailer Park Hitch. Okay. Where we, I went to it twice, maybe three times. I'm not sure. Uh, Crystal Beer Parlor is definitely a highlight. Oh yeah, I liked Mrs. Wilkes. You weren't so crazy about it. You didn't think it was worth the line, but I loved it. I thought the food was down home and country. Vicks on the River was good. We oh, met with yes. uh, Icia. Uh huh. And Ch- Chanel. And Chanel. Uh huh. And we just had, I don't know, it started out with like soup and crab cakes or something. I it had was a burger. So good. It was great. Um, the Pirate's House shocked me at how good the food oh, was. Yes. Yeah. The Pirate's House. Slides, sliders. Amazing. I, I still think about, they, they offer franchise opportunities. I'm telling you, this this chain is probably going to explode when it's not a chain yet. You can get in at this level right now. Yeah. I think it's awesome. You can get three, if you're indecisive when it comes to the menu, like I am, I like to try three or four different things if I really could. And it's sly sliders, you can actually do it because the servings are small enough and yeah. you can just like taste a bunch of different things. Um, I If I were interested in getting into the food business, which I'm not, I would definitely open up a slice <laughs> sliders in okay. every town we went to. Okay. Um, and last but not least, the thing we did on the last night there, Betty Bombers, which was the oh. VFW hall. On one side, they had, you know, all of the, I think at that, you had a milkshake and we oh. had burgers. and we It's had like whatever. an old school 50s diner. Yeah. And then on the other side, they had like a full blown, like a bar. And that place was jumping. Oh, yeah. Like right outside of Forsyth Park. Yeah. So, uh, and even the, I went to a coffee shop that was run by a cult. Yeah. You did. And those scones were damn delicious. I think about going back for those scones. So all right. quickly, what out of all the places we've been in the country, name one restaurant that was your favorite. Terry Black's. Terry Black's. It's the most memorable. I still think about that night. We stood in that line yeah. and went to that walk you, up. And you like just- Dallas barbecue more than you like St. Louis? Because when we are, I'm sorry. Memphis? No, no. See, Kansas City. Kansas City. So- Kansas City barbecue, I think, is better than Texas barbecue, but we're not talking about that trip because that was not part of our- I know. Yeah. Um, but if we're talking about barbecue, yes. I would say that um, for me, okay. it's Kansas City style barbecue. So your favorite place was Terry Black's. It was. I still think about it. I disagree. I think Memphis and the commissary in Germantown was the best barbecue I probably have ever had in my life. It was really good, but I felt like the experience at Terry Black's was better. Like you stood oh, in the line, sure. you saw all the meat being um, smoked in the smokers. There are like 15 smokers. Yeah. Um, you're talking to other people in the line. Everyone's excited about getting the food. Um, so I think coupled with the experience is what made Terry Black's good for me. Agree. Um, it, was I'd a say, great, it was way more of an experience for sure. I'd say that the barbecue was similar. Um, I thought the commissary was just as good as Terry Black's. Terry Black's was just as good as a commissary. I don't. I don't ever think about the commissary. I think oh my about God, Terry I think Black's. Think about it all the time. Okay. And I thought they were nice. I thought like, they were average. You thought they were average? Yeah, I did. Our guy had us. He got us in and out. We were in a hurry. We had to get to Graceland. I know. I don't know. <laughs> I I don't know. I okay. just I. You have yours. I have mine. Yeah. Okay. That's how it is. Okay. Would you ever travel with a dog again? No. Uh, qualify it. I wouldn't. I I think. Man, traveling with Roxy and 
I just, I did not anticipate that she would be as affected by our travels as she was. Just and like I, the kids. And I know she's older. <laughs> just like the kids. I know, kids. but that's, so that's we, my point. I would do it We didn't if think I, the kids were going to be as upset when we sold the house as they were. So here we are with oh, the dog I too. I know. But I also think like our children, when they were young, we taught them to get on planes. Like we put them on planes as soon as we could to go visit family or to do things, to continue traveling and doing things as a family. I think you have to have a young dog that just sort of acclimates. And I think for Roxy, it was such a shock to her system. She was so used to our backyard. And yeah, we traveled as a family. We would put her in the car and take her on a four and a half hour trip. That's nothing compared to what we were doing. And she was just totally not acclimated. It did feel cruel as we went, as we proceeded through the country to continue uh, sort of doing that to her in and out of hotels. It was. I mean, um, we just wanted to finally be settled somewhere. And yeah. um, it was really nice that we had this place in Florida to come to because yeah. the one thing that we did not realize, and we have shared this with so many people, is that traveling with the dog, um, if you don't have a base camp somewhere, it is just mean to do to an older dog. And yeah. um, if you have a little dog, maybe it's different. Like a little dog could sit in your lap while yeah. you're in a car and they don't know the difference between- Yeah, like hanging a crate or whatever. It's no big deal. Yeah, but uh, a dog, she's a boxer and um, the dog, her size and just her age, uh, we we are so grateful that we had um, a base camp to come to so she could just lay down yeah. and have a constant. So now when we travel, we leave her with my brother and she has two houses now and she she is just so happy. I mean, she has two places to go to, two backyards to poop in. It's yeah. like heaven. And Vicky, our sister-in-law, is a dog sitter. So there are like doggies over there for her to play with and all that stuff. So she's living her best life right now for anybody who's been wondering where the hell the dog's been. <laughs> um, she's actually been, laying on her doggy bed yeah, right now right behind here. us she's as we're chilling. recording. Yep. Um, uh, so t- but I was going to say, we ended up picking places that we did not want to stay just based on her needing a yard. Like we, we realized as we were traveling how much we were growing to hate Airbnbs. And uh, there were hotels that were nice and affordable and everything we wanted, but we didn't pick them because we'd opted to pick a bit. Like I remember in Oklahoma City, we found an oasis for her. She yeah. was in that backyard uh, killing it for like three or four days and just loving life, you know. We also did something that we normally wouldn't do um, because she needed like to just have some time with like other dogs. We put her in a kennel twice, like an overnight like doggy kennel. Um, yeah. Once because we we wanted to do a hike and we knew she was too old to do the hike with us. Mm-hmm. We were not going to torture her and do that. So, yeah, we put Zion. Her, so we put her in a kennel. Um, we knew there were problems when she didn't want to come home with us. Remember yeah. the next day we picked yeah. her up and she did not want to get in the car and we felt so bad. And we were only in Utah at this point. Yeah. We we're trying to make it to the East coast to make it to Florida. And we had so much more road ahead of us. We both felt terrible. And yeah. so, uh, we have a listener who is now traveling with two little dogs and she says that she sometimes cries and she oh, said really? it's a lot of work and it's just hard. It's hard traveling with a dog and you know, she's single. And I think that also makes it difficult because, you know, there'd be some days where I could take her for a walk or, you yeah. know, you had, you know, me to like help out with things. This woman has just herself. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the well, answer would be no for yeah. me as well. Well, I already knew that. That's why I didn't even ask you. <laughs> <laughs> I already knew the answer to that one. But do let me ask you this. Two okay. questions. Yes. We've traveled predominantly in the South in the past six months. We did not plan on that. We, no. we actually thought we would be up the East Coast by now. Yes. And we're just now getting to that. Yes. But um, my question is, are all Southern states the same? And do you know the difference? Like, is there a difference between a Southerner and a redneck? Okay. All Southern states are not the same. And this is something I only learned while traveling, because if you had asked me a year ago, living in LA, are all Southern states the same? I absolutely would have said yes. Yeah. No question about it. Yeah, they're in the South. They're all the same. Everyone has the same mentality. Everyone has the yeah. same politics. Everyone has the same lifestyle. They go to church on Sunday. They have family dinner on Sundays, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, it's it was in my head of what the South was, just like it's in other people's head as to what city living is like if yeah. you haven't done it. So now being in the South for several, several months on end, um, no, no, not all Southern states are the same. Texas is different than Florida. 
Is Florida even in the South? I'll answer. Okay. <laughs> um, Mississippi is different than Texas. And I think Texas is just different from everyone. So, uh, um, yeah. yeah, I would say that everyone is different in each state you go to has been our experience. Yeah. And um, is there a difference between a Southerner and a redneck? Uh, yes. A wise Texan once told me a redneck will act on it. A Southerner Ooh, will not. That's the difference. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me start where you left off then. Uh, redneck is actually a loaded term, obviously. Uh, if you're a redneck and you say you're a redneck and you're proud to be a redneck, then it's a great thing, right? Mm -hmm. You're very, you know, that's who we are and we don't care what anybody else thinks and Jason Aldean, small town and all that other stuff. Great. Um, I would say it's also a derogatory term, especially that the coasts use to refer to people from a certain area, whether they are actually de facto rednecks or not. Well, did you know rednecks don't have to necessarily live in the South? There are rednecks in like Washington. Okay, so I'm getting to that. Uh, <laughs> when you see, I learned all this recently. When you see a Confederate flag in Ohio, uh -huh. that's a redneck. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that, that to me, and to me personally, it really is a state of mind. I do agree with uh, your friend, the Texan, whoever that is, uh, that said they will act on it because yeah, I think there are a lot more people more inclined to sort of show their ass in Walmart in certain areas than there are mm. others, you know? So if you, so let's break it down into states. Alabama and Mississippi, I would say, are more of a genteel society. Mm -hmm. uh, you're not going to find too many people acting like a weirdo. A fool. Yeah. A fool. Yeah. yeah. At Golden Corral. I tend to think a lot of it is sort of old money. And whether or not you have that old money, you still act like old money if you come from those areas. Well, I think when we met with Landon and Kate uh, Bryant mm -hmm. that live in Laurel, Mississippi, I think Landon, or was it Kate that said it best? Like, even if you have those thoughts, like if you have a Confederate flag in your house and you live in Mississippi, you are not hanging it in a window. Like they're um, more, what's the word? I, I'm like- it's not Polish, but the word is like, he said to me, like, you're more Southern. Like, that's like, yeah. is that what he said? Like, was that the word? Like, like you don't behave like that in public. That's right. what he said. Right. And so uh, I would say uh, there, especially, it is more sort of, it really, it, like, even in- It's manners. Even in Georgia, like in Savannah, it was sort of, um, there's just a more calmness to those areas that I ever thought that we were going to experience. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm using the word calm. Like, is everybody get, like going to act like a lunatic when you cross the border into Alabama? No, <laughs> they're not. And as it turns out, I would say Alabamans are like the most normal people that you would meet. We went to several cities in Alabama. We did Auburn. Yeah. We did Gulf Shores. Yep. We did um, Fair Hope. Yep. I mean, uh, we've been to, we were in Opelika. Like yep. we've been to four cities now just, and no, everyone was, no one acted crazy. No, Alabama shocked me, honestly. I It was, it was more normal than we are. Oh, you for know? sure. We were the riffraff again. We're not, yeah, we were the riffraff for sure. Mm -hmm. By normal, I mean like just waiting in line to get into the restaurant without yelling or screaming about how long it's taking. Um, yeah. Everybody just takes it at their own pace. I would say t Texas is decidedly different because even the white collars in Texas have a blue collar blood vein, like, like vein inside them. Oh, you know they what throw I mean? it down. Like you could have a suit and tie and it's very much like Chicago yeah. in Texas. I felt it was very much like Chicago. Like he could have a beautiful cowboy hat on a suit and tie. Yeah. But he has no problem throwing it down in a lunch place if some if there's a problem. Oh, if there's a problem, yeah. for sure. Somebody's going to stand up and defend what's right, for sure, yes. in Texas. But not only that, I'm just saying, you know, uh, Larry in marketing knows how to operate a winch, you know? What is that? A winch? Yeah. That's like the thing on the front of your truck that you use. It's a cable you use to pull somebody out of the mud. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he definitely yeah. knows how to do that. Yeah. So I'm just, you know, it's like, that's just in the blood, it seems with Texans, like uh -huh. they know how to be rugged when they need to be. Uh -huh. And like you said, their shirt is nice and pressed mm -hmm. when and they don't. And their cowboy hat's really expensive. Uh, they are yeah. for sure. Yeah. The boots, uh -huh. the boots. Yeah. Come on. Uh, so anyway, that's my, and to answer your earlier question, no, Florida is not part of the South. Florida is just different. I'm just going to stick with that. Florida is just different. Moving on. Okay. So we are coming to the end and I have to ask you. 
the same question so many people have asked us. Yeah. You're a year in. Tell me, what is your top five and why? Okay, this was actually more difficult than I thought it was going to be because I thought I had my answers already. I've been thinking about it all year. I've had a year to think about this, yeah. right? As we've gone to, on to each city. But when it actually came time to put pen to paper and write down those five names, it was difficult. So I'm going to start out with an honorable mention. Okay. <laughs> Laurel, Mississippi. Okay. Honorable mention. As I said, we drove away and for me, the wheels are spinning because uh, we could have a house we can afford there. Mm -hmm. We could have people that love us mm -hmm. as expats from California. Correct. We could start a business. You could run a shop downstairs and I could run a podcast booth upstairs uh, at one of the buildings downtown. Yeah, because it would they be have fantastic. Beautiful, historic uh, buildings downtown yeah. that have living spaces. Yeah. But uh, number five, it's never fallen off my list. I still like it. There are such great neighborhoods there. Uh, I still am hanging on to Salt Lake City or the surrounding area. Okay. I love it there. I love visiting Mia there, especially in the fall. The air is crisp. The student population there, the hospitals, the downtown area, you have Metropolitan if you want it. I could, if we were to live in that area, I could go see the Jazz play the Lakers all the damn time. They're mm -hmm. in the same conference. Um, and nobody's going to stab me yeah. be <laughs> because, because it's Salt Lake City and they just don't get down like that. A lot of artists come to play in it's Salt true. Lake City, all that stuff. So that's a huge one for me. Covington, Kentucky is my number four. It's one of those places where we were just there for such a short time. And I was really bewildered in the short time that we spent with Bert and Jenna showing us around just the downtown area. But then we met Karis at Second Sight Distillery. Mm -hmm. Everybody there was super nice uh, in the entire, you know, anybody that we came into contact with that day. And for all the reasons mentioned previously, there just seems to be a ton to do there. Yeah, agreed. Um, my number three is Auburn slash Opelika. I like the promise of the downtown area in Opelika. I think that's more our speed. Number two for me is still Santa Fe. Oh, I wow. still think about it. There cool. is a part of me, every time somebody says to me, you know your kids aren't going to live around you. You know they don't want to live around you when they, they're going to all go off on their own lives, on their own ways, and that's heartbreaking. Uh, but for that reason- I don't think they are. I know you know. I'm holding on to that. But this is my turn. Okay, go ahead. But for that reason, I'm like, well, then why wouldn't I want blue corn enchiladas every day? A to, it's a mystical place. It is. It's so easy. It it has uh, all those weird hoity-toity words like enchantment or whatever. It's just, it's super easy. The people are super nice. I liked uh, all the locals we met there and- I think there's plenty, like there's a lot of artwork. There's a lot of community stuff going on. It was just, it was great. And if you can afford a house there, which I'm still not sure, I'm not convinced we can, but uh, if you could, I think it's a great area. And, um, and for political reasons, it's a blue state. So <laughs> <laughs> I would, I would, be, I mean, all these cities that I'm mentioning, whether or not they're red or blue states, they're, they're places where people have made us feel welcome, whatever your political inclination. Yeah. So even if they heartily disagree with you. Um, <laughs> so, you know, for that reason, they'll I, go toe to toe and still have a beer yeah. with you. But number one, I, for me, I think it's not a surprise to anybody. It's Savannah, 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 Savannah. Also a blue state. Sorry, last couple of elections. It's a blue state. Georgia's a blue state. Hopefully it stays that way. But it's a very purple state. And I like that. And we met uh, Democrats and Republicans there. Like we had a crap ton of food there, uh -huh. like we talked about. Yeah. And it's just such a walkable city. It's beautiful. There's so much history, 24 squares or whatever. Yeah. Um, again, you know, real estate is an issue there for us. But, a big one. Yeah. yeah. When, it's a big one. Because where we want to live in the downtown area and the Victorian, which is a separate area outside the downtown area, just outside of that downtown area, um, yeah. it's still houses start at a million dollars. So um, that is very difficult. So for all the reasons that we love Savannah, we wouldn't want to live outside of it in the suburbs. We just have no interest. We can yeah. live in a suburb anywhere. Uh, if I'm going to live in a suburb, fine. I'll go to like Cleveland. Uh, I want to live well, in- Well, in that case, then we want the 10 acres. Exactly. You know, and yeah. we'll go rural instead of suburban. Right. Um, but you didn't but ask what we, me- But what we experienced in Savannah was not rural. It was urban and that's what we wanted. Uh, in that yeah. particular case, yeah. because it has so much character. Yeah. yeah. We, we, uh, I would say other, I could live in Vancouver. You couldn't, I don't think you would like it, but you didn't ask me 
where, like what my top five were that we could afford. You just asked me. I did. I know. <laughs> what my top we five were, if I could live there right now. Yes. Yes. So okay. what, are, what are yours? Let's get into it. Okay. So my top five. So, uh, starting with number five, Corpus Christi, Texas. Ooh. So in my top five, I tried to put affordability and, um, Corpus, and I did do some. I did not. <laughs> I, I was did, living a pipe dream. Okay. I lived a pipe dream on a few of these, but Corpus Christi, Texas is, um, realistically a place that we could afford and it has everything that we would want. It has the beach. It has a small city. Uh, it has areas we can move to and get some property. Um, it just didn't have the food. Like, you know, we're big foodies. So the food in Corpus is a little lack is a little lax, but there are a handful of places we could escape to on a Friday night. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like Corpus Christi is, is a place we could actually really do. And our daughter lives there. So that makes it even, even nicer. That's a huge draw. Yeah. Yes. Uh, number four for me, Auburn, Alabama. So Ooh, that, that low on the list. I'm well, surprised. It's only because Opelika is number three. Oh, okay. so, <laughs> so Auburn, I really enjoyed, but the only downside for me for Auburn was you can't buy a piece of property there. It's not to be had anymore. People came in a few years ago and scooped all those houses up on a few acres. So our dream of having property. Amy sold them all houses. Yeah. Yeah. Amy Cotney. She Come sold on, them Amy. all. Uh-huh. You did us dirty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just like all of our travels, we feel like we've missed the boat on a few cities and Auburn is one of them. Yeah. So unfortunately, uh, we, we'd we have to get a house in a subdivision and there's nothing wrong with that because the house we have right here in Florida is in a, basically a subdivision. Uh, it's just that for our forever home where the kids are going to, you know, be visiting and living with us next door, even though he doesn't believe it. Uh, Auburn is not like on my high list because I can't get property. So I want my kids to like, you know, I have this dream that maybe they'll build a house on property we own. So whatever, but just let me live that dream. I don't know if I want them that close. Okay. Anyway, Auburn is number four for that. Also, I just felt like Auburn's downtown was a little small. It just encompassed a couple of blocks. Whereas Opelika, which is number three on my list, Mm -hmm. their downtown was much bigger. It was probably four or five blocks. You could buy a house with a little bit of property. It was um, just 15 minutes outside of Auburn, which makes it really enticing because when my kids do come and live with me and they want to have a, like a Friday night out, Auburn is just 15 minutes away. And everyone knows I still want to be near a city so the kids can have fun when they come to visit and, Mm -hmm. you know, live. Okay. Okay. Number two. Okay. This is where the pipe dream starts. Two and one are pipe dreams. Bernie, Texas. Oh, okay. so number two, uh, there's no way we could afford Bernie houses started a million dollars. You do get 10 acres of, well, five acres of property for most of those houses. I mean, of course you're going to, you know, there's houses that have less, but for yeah, it what depends we, on how close to town you live. Yeah. So the further out from the town, more, pro, more acreage and the houses we saw that were on minimum of five acres, we could totally do. Yeah. Uh, they couldn't do us because we couldn't afford it. So, but that is my pipe dream for Bernie. It's an adorable downtown area. It encompasses more than just a block or two, not yeah. to mention it's 30 minutes from San Antonio, which yeah. is adorable. And it has a great area airport that's easy to get in and out of. It does. There's so much to, that Bernie has to offer. And it I never even heard of this town prior to a month ago. So the fact that it made my number two just tells you how amazing mm-hmm. this town is. And if you can visit, go and stay at the Kendall. And there are others <laughs> in that area. Oh, you should definitely stay at the Kendall. That place is awesome. Yeah. Um, but you've totally hijacked my comment. Uh, but you hijacked I, my top. I'm but not- <laughs> I know, but I was going to say, but in addition to that, you have Comfort, you have Bandera, you have a bunch of little towns in the, in the yeah, it's, 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 it's right true. at the edge of Hill Country. It's gorgeous. So if you can't afford Bernie, maybe you can find something in one of those other little towns in that area. And it's something we can explore, but you and I, we don't want to go to a town that's just up and coming so much. Like, I don't know if we have the life in us, like the energy to like, with, like the wherewithal to wait for that town to pop off. So we kind of want to be at a town where it's almost there or already there. The problem with that is that if it's almost there or already there, we can't afford it. Probably too late. Yeah. I know. So yeah. we may have to reevaluate our wherewithal. So, um, so my number one 
is Savannah. Same as you. Yeah. It is just everything James mentioned. The selling point for me is if you've been listening to our podcast for the last year, you know, it's near an airport because I talked about that in our Savannah episode and everyone knows I want to be near an airport. Um, It is uh, walkable. I don't need to use my car every day. It's really safe. Uh, My kids would come and have the best time. Um, It has transportation, public transportation that's free if you get on the trolley during certain hours. Uh, The homeless problem is very small in Savannah. Everyone is really friendly. And on top of it, something I was not even on my list of requirements for buying a home, it's 15 minutes from a beach, Tybee Island. Yeah. The only thing I'm giving up, because you can't have everything unless you're a multimillionaire, then you can. But with our budget, you can't have everything. So the one thing I would be giving up by getting a house in Savannah would be property. So because I would want a Victorian, I would be giving up land to live in the Victorian historic area in a Victorian. (laughs) So um, there are houses we could probably move to outside of the city. Uh, We could probably have some acreage, but he and I love the walkability, which is why it is on both of our uh, top five and has made number one for both of us. Now we just have to wait for a house that costs $500,000 and doesn't need any improvements (laughs) to fall from the sky and be ready for us to move in in the historic area of downtown Savannah. Absolutely. And it's got old folks, young folks, black folks, white folks, everything. all kinds of folks, everything. It's food. a it's a really vibrant little city. The for food sure. alone, you have you have every kind of different We mentioned the food, hon. We oh. we're you good did. on the food. You went on the food. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I guess that's going to wrap this up. Should we yep. start a GoFundMe page? For what? Savannah. Our house or yeah, food? Yeah, for Savannah. We can afford the food. We can't afford the Victorian. We can't so afford the Victorian because we'll we keep Go- eating all the food. Yeah, we'll start a GoFundMe. We'll do a, we'll go do a GoFundMe and see how far that gets. Oh, yeah. We're going to do a Patreon. No, we said we were never going to do that <laughs> no, stuff. I know. I'm talking about <laughs> for the house in Savannah. I'm not talking about for the show. No, okay. I'm talking about for the house. So oh, okay. I think I'm going to start the GoFundMe. Okay. Let me know how that works out. It's not going to. I know. <laughs> I think our I think our listeners are very yeah. generous with I, their time. Yeah. I'm not I, sure they would like chip in for and that. And not to mention, I'm usually the one that gives money. I hardly ever take it. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, so anyway, so that was it. That is a recap of our year on the road. Now, we're about to take our East Coast run, hit some cities on the East Coast to see is there a place there that beats our top five. I, I don't know. This top five is tough. I, I can't imagine any city. And on the East Coast, beating this top five. Yeah, you but know. you just went to Bernie two weeks ago, and it's like you're number two now. I know. And you know what? S- Santa Fe was my number one for how many months? So I'm very Several. I'm very fickle, if you, you haven't learned. You're I'm fickle. very fickle. And I tend to like everywhere. Yeah. He <laughs> falls in love immediately. I do. Yeah. I even saw the good in Little Rock. Yeah. He falls in love immediately. What do you call those people that are immediately fall in love with? Like they meet a girl on a Friday night, and they're like, oh, I love her. Oh, she's the greatest girl ever. Yeah. You're one of those people. Yeah, yeah, I am. You definitely. When it comes to towns, yeah. I'm fair weathered. You are. You're a little more fair weathered. You give them up easy. I let them go. It's take, it takes a little more for me to let them go. Kind of like me. Kind of, yeah. yeah. I've had a really hard time letting you go. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. How many times did I break up with you? Seven. It was four. That's a whole other episode. Yeah, it was four. Did we talk about this in a previous episode? Oh, maybe. We're still, we're, we're here though. We're getting off track. You, we, love, you love the fight. You, uh, <laughs> I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> no how about this you love a challenge i do love a challenge yeah i so, do love a challenge mm-hmm, yeah so i knew you loved me anyway it all worked out it did i knew i knew what was best for you you knew i'd come around 25 <laughs> years later <laughs> only took 25 years <laughs> you knew i'd come around I, I mean i should say I, I feel lucky that you still want to spend time with me especially on the road so we're starting year number two we are um are you wondering what it's going to hold for us I am. I think it is interesting that, you know, I've done Egypt and Jordan. You're about to do, like, you're kind of, we've tiptoed around it, but you're about to go to Wisconsin for four days. Okay, a little different than Egypt and Jordan, but yeah, I'm going to hit Milwaukee. A little different, but it's like, okay, now we're sort of dividing and conquering a little bit. We are. Which I kind of like, Yeah. you know. I mean, I know we're not moving to Egypt or Jordan, but- we could potentially end up in Door County. We really could. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, even though you don't want winter, not in the winter. <laughs> I know. Uh-uh. But uh, no, I think that's good. And you know, I'm going to hit North Carolina. I think without you, and we're heading to Connecticut together, and we're going to do Rhode Island and all these I other think places. Quebec is on the calendar. Ooh, nice. Yeah. More Canada. Yeah. So I like uh, it. 
Um, so yeah, so year two is going to be interesting. I think about it as well. Like, will we find that house? I, I am. And then what happens with the podcast when we find that house? I know. Is it like over? Is it like now all of a sudden we have to spin it off like Joni and Chachi or something like that? Oh, we might have to. We might have to do a spinoff. That spinoff sucked. Okay. Ours is going to so, be way better. Okay. I promise you. All right. Right now, I like keeping it to happy days. And happy days for me is uh, going to a new town at least Who's every Who's Fonzie? Month. Uh, I'm Fonzie. I'm cool. I don't want to be You're Joni. Richie. God, <laughs> you're I never liked. You're no, Potsy. I don't want to be Potsy. <laughs> you're I'll, Potsy. I was upset over Richie with the freckles because I've never been a freckle person. You're Jenny Piccolo. Oh no, I'll take Richie. Okay, these are all you're throwing out terrible ones. All right, empty nest. Full tank. I guess this episode's over. Bye. See you next week. <laughs> Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.